matter how long I leave that, hey, I'm setting up my stream thing up, I always forget to put my microphone down in front of my face. Hey, everybody. Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Good evening. Nice Thursday. Happy Thursday. Hope everybody's ready for the weekend. I know I say that every single week, but I'm ready for the weekend. I'm tired. <laughs> I uh, didn't have too hard of a day today. Oh, you know what? I forgot to... Oh, now I don't know how to get to it. I got this. Dang it. All of my lighting is hot garbage. Let's see if I can get this thing to light up for me. Bear with me just a minute here. Ugh. That's the sun. See, I just turned on the sun. There we go. All right. Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Sorry about that. A little bit of technical difficulties. <laughs> so let's talk about some bugs. Let's see. What did we? What happened this week? <clears throat> What did I release? What video did I release this week? Let's see. So here's my YouTube channel. If you ever get a chance, go check me out like you are right now. By the way, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Like me. Um, but anyway, here here is my YouTube. And if you scroll down to through my YouTube channel, I've got little shorts. I got a, a bee, bee nest that I got rid of last week. And I did a, a diatomaceous earth product review, um, which surprisingly didn't go over that well. Most people really don't care about DE. <laughs> but I wanted to give a review, an honest review, because I have been doing a lot of reviews lately on uh, different products that people use for different insect problems. So uh, to give you an honest review of what I think about you know, how different things work. And this goes over the dangers a little bit, a little bit. But also, uh, you know, I, I'll give you an honest review of what I think of it and what I, how, I, how effective I think it is and how, how well it works uh, as far as just user ability. I have nothing for this coming week. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Let's talk tonight, see if we can come up with a decent video that I can do over next week. But, um, but anyway, hope everybody's doing all right. Like I said, don't forget, subscribe, follow me, hit the notification bell. So you know when I'm live. If you're watching this later, after it's uh, you know after it's already aired, I save all my vods. Like I said, if you go to my playlists here, uh, you can get see here are all my created playlists. I've got things on like bed bugs and uh, short videos, how to how to kill this or that or the other, all kinds of stuff. But if you um, let's see, how do you get? You go to videos here, and then sort by well, where are my live streams? I guess they mix them all in now. But if you have a phone and you use uh, like an iPad or, or an iPhone or something like that, you can actually sort by live streams. So um, anyway, that's me. Oh, there we go. Live now. There's my live now. That's what I'm doing right now. And then you can go, you know what? This is really, let me see if I can fix this. This is really big. Let's shrink that down a little bit. There we go. So you've got your... Uh, so if you go by live, you go to past live streams. If you're ever interested in actually go and re-watching some of these, I've got all of my live streams posted here. You can actually go down and view them all the way back to my very first live stream here. I think I talked about it a little bit last uh, last week. But um, uh, four years ago was my very first live stream. And of course now I live stream every Thursday night, uh, typically after 9.30. But tonight I'm early. It's quarter after nine now, so I'm actually early tonight. Got the kids in bed early, and so I can get on here and try to chat with you guys. Uh, hey, Duct Tape Bandit. Hey, Jennifer. Nice to see you both tonight. Duct Tape's been really busy on my channel lately. He's been uh, commenting on a lot of my videos. Let me see if I can pull up. Actually, you know what? I don't need that. Let me do it this way. Uh, um, let's do this. Put it over here. I don't know why it's opening up on that window. All right, so let's see. If I let me see if I close that and click it again. 
Yep, it went right back over there again. Oh well. So let's see. I have a couple of comments on here I wanted to actually go over tonight on my videos, which, like I said, I read every comment. For those that don't know, I read every single comment that anyone leaves. I actually uh, approve comments. So the way that my uh, YouTube channel works is if you come and you view my videos on YouTube, I'm trying to be professional. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to give people the proper advice, the proper direction they need to go when they do their own pest control. I don't want people to do dangerous things. I don't want people to put themselves in harm way. I don't want people to harm their pets. I don't want people to harm their children. And I don't want you to hurt yourself. And so the advice I give is only tried and true methods that I know won't hurt you. And so, or, you know, each other. You know, the thing is, is that you, when, when, if, if pest control, uh, oh, the real duct tape bandit is a girl. <laughs> Sorry. I never know. But, um, you must really like to steal duct tape. But, uh, the thing is, is that when, actually, I think a duct tape bandit is from Home Alone 2, I think. I think that's a reference. But, um, but so anyway, we, whenever you watch my channel, I, I read every single comment, every single comment that's posted on every single video that I ever do. So, uh. Just so you know, I'll read all your comments. And if it's important enough to actually warrant another a video, I will actually do a video or I'll answer you in the comment section. So let's see. There was a comment I wanted to go over. Um, let's see. So a lot of people have been asking recently on what to do with automobiles. Um, I get this a lot. A lot of people ask, what are we going to do to treat an automobile? Like the, a lot of exterminators won't. They claim it's a liability risk. Um, but in truth and honesty, that's not true. What, what it is is that a lot of pesticides won't work in your automobile, especially in the summertime. Pesticides that aren't labeled for use in high temperatures will not work in your automobile. So you can't actually use them in your car and have them actually last more than a few days because the heat and the humi the heat and the, the, the solar rays that come in and refract off of all of your glasses and your windows in your car can cause the pesticide to break down prematurely. So a lot of people won't treat cars. Um, so what you want to do when you're reading a pesticide label, you want to read to make sure you can actually use it in your car but on top of that, you want to make, and, and, and it's not really specific on whether or not you can use it in a car. What you need to do is you need to look into the high temperature rating. So pesticides have started putting uh, on, their, on, their, on their labels that they can or cannot be used in high temperature. And what, why is this? This is because a lot of people are using pesticides during heat treatments for bed bugs. And so, for example, Crossfire is actually labeled that it can be used in a high temperature setting. Just like temperate, temperate can also be used in a high temperature setting. So these are pesticides that you would be able to use in your automobile for the control of things like bed bugs. So um, just so you know, it can be done. You can treat your car. I've got videos on how to treat your car on my channel. You just search. If you go to my channel and just search right here. Oh, you have to go to my channel. I mean, you could search YouTube. But you could try to find it that way, but it's going to be easier to just go to my channel and this allows you to search videos on my specific channel. And what you do is you search a uh, car. Let's try, try car. Let's see what we get. All right, bed bugs in your car, what to do? So this is bed bugs, mites, fleas in the car, how to treat your car for bugs. It is possible to treat cars. So this is the number one video that comes up on my channel and it'll show you how to treat your car. So I recommend going and watching that if you're curious on how to treat your car. Cameron says, Hello, I'm curious. What is your protocol for dealing with customers with delusional parasi paras parasitosis or think they are being bitten, but you don't find any signs of arthropod activity? Do you refer honeybee cases to a rescuer? Bees are beneficial. Um, I will go over that in a minute, Jennifer. Uh, actually, I have a really good video on bees. If you go here and go bee, uh -huh, just search honeybee. Honeybee. There you go. What they aren't telling you about, hashtag save the honeybees. I recommend you watch that video, Jennifer. But Cameron, so, so Cameron brought up delusional parasitosis. So what that is, is in pest control, 
there's something that we deal with a lot with bed bugs, especially recently with the media hype over bed bugs, is people will call you and they are concerned they are being bit. They feel the bites, they itch, they scratch. Um, they might even be scratching sores on themselves by you know itching and scratching the spots that they feel these tingly, itchy sensations. And they're positive they're getting bit by bed bugs. And some of you watching this video may be having the exact same problem. And so what this, this, is, this is actually a diagnosis. Now, I don't make these diagnoses. I'm not a doctor. But there are some di doctors that will diagnose delusional parasitosis. And what that is, is, is you are delusional in that you believe you have a parasite or a bug or something biting you. And in the pest control field, we get this all the time. We get people that call and they think they have something biting them and it's not. I get this all the time because I'm on YouTube and people will call my phone and they'll say, hey, this is what's been going on with me. Do you think I have bed bugs? And I'm like, no, I don't think you have bed bugs. Have you found a bed bug? So the number one question that I always ask my customer is, what do you think is biting you? And so they'll usually say something like, well, I think it's bed bugs. And so I'll, I'll approach them and I'll say, okay, have you found a bed bug? And there's, there's a phone ringing right now. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? Hi there. Hello. You're having, your, you're having a live show. I am. I am having a live show. How are you? I'm doing good. How about semi trucks? Semi semi truck came with bed bugs. I know it falls a lot into your automobile category. Oh yeah. Well, it's automobile and a car. I mean, and, and a house. It's a house on wheels. It's like a mobile home, and so you would treat it in the same way you would a mobile home. In that you would have to, well, you pick the bed. So if is it a cab with a bed? It's a cab with a bed. Yeah, then you need to remove the bed. You need to treat around everything that you possibly can. It's easier, to, honestly, it's easier to take everything out of the truck because you can move around easier if you don't have things to move, you know, that, that's going to block you in or cause you to not be able to turn around and, and properly treat the areas you need to treat. But you take everything out mm -hmm. and you treat the truck. And uh, around the cracks and crevices and places like that is where you need to treat. Um, you know, I've only done, I've only done a mobile home, I've, not a mobile home per se, but a camper van kind of like thing. An, like but an I've RV. I've never actually treated a semi truck. I had some a guy one time that was going to bring his semi truck to me to Roanoke, Virginia, and I was going to meet him out on eighty one and treat his truck. But I think he ended up doing it himself because I told him where he could find Crossfire and ended up doing it himself. But um, you, mm -hmm. you pull everything out of the truck. You treat all the running boards. You treat all of the you know, cracks and crevices out in the back of the truck, around the cab, the ceiling in the cab. Uh, I've only been in a, a semi maybe once or twice. But um, mm -hmm. the chairs, the seats. You, There's you, a lot of places where they can hide. Right. And you need to treat as many cracks and crevices that you possibly can. And then you treat your okay. mattress when you put it back. Don't put any sheets or anything on the mattress. Treat the mattress. And then mm -hmm. put the mattress... Uh, Wait for it to dry, let it dry, put your sheets and everything on it like you normally would and put it back in the truck, and you're going to have to live with them for a few days. Um, because just like I tell everyone that uses a crossfire treatment is that you're going to have bugs crawling out. You're going to have them come out and die. They're going to come out and try to find you, and when they do, they crawl across the bed and they'll die. But it's going to be probably a little annoying. You'll probably have bugs coming out and biting you even when you're driving because they'll come out through the chairs. Um, is it an air ride? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so they, they can come up around the chairs. You need to treat up under the chairs really well. Because um, I have mm -hmm. actually, I've, I've used to drive um, the Enterprise trucks. Now, it's not as big as like a semi, but it's similar with the air ride features underneath the chairs and all that. Mm -hmm. And so you need to treat all of that. Be careful of electronics. You don't want to spray inside any mm -hmm. kind of electrical connector or anything like that. If you've got a connector under the chair that goes to your seat belts, uh, har wiring harness or anything like that you need to be real careful around your wiring harnesses and you treat around your seat uh, if you've got seat covers you need to take those off remove the seat covers and treat the chairs and let them dry and then put the seat cover back on either crossfire or temperate but you prefer crossfire i would probably use crossfire to temperate because temperate only lasts a couple weeks it's it says right on the label you need to retreat every seven to ten days and crossfire allows for retreat mm -hmm. once a month it lasts longer it does a better job and i think it would do better for you now the problem is is that i mean you sound where are you from pennsylvania oh well, you're not far <laughs> um no. yeah i was just in pennsylvania a few years ago my my wife she's uh her relatives um built snowberry hill but um 
or Snow Hill or whatever they call it out there, Snow Burgers. Huh. But um, they're, I think that's near, what is it, Philly? Like 20 minutes outside of Philly. But um, oh, okay. But anyway, yeah, so, so you can get Crossfire. That's what you need to use. If you can get Crossfire, that's going to be the best thing for you to use. There's this neat product I was reading about. It's Spores. Yeah. Apprehend. Apprehend. the name of yeah. this. It was developed by Penn State University. Yeah. Have you worked with this at all? Apprehend is a really good pesticide. So it does. It works through it's, spores. It's like a mold fungus spore that attacks the exoskeleton of the bed bug and kills it. And it does work. And it spreads from bed bug to bed bug. So it works through transference as well. But then so does Crossfire. Crossfire mm-hmm. also, also works through transference. But it is a very effective pesticide. In fact, I started recommending it to my Canadian uh, YouTube followers because they can't get Crossfire in Canada. But you can hire someone to come out and treat with Apprehend. The problem with Apprehend ah. is if you go to their website, the suppliers that they have listed as, you know, they'll say, you know, do you know where to buy? Buy from these people. When you go to their sites, they only sell to people like me. So you would have to have a pesticide applicator license to buy Apprehend. But not only would you need an applicator license, you would also need the specialized equipment to apply it because Apprehend requires that special equipment because they develop the pesticide to be used in that specific piece of equipment. It's a very low pressure. It's not like a BNG or a high pressure, like a gallon sprayer. It's it's very Mm -hmm. low pressure so that it doesn't disperse the spores in the wrong pattern. What is Crossfire? Is it? chemical crossfire is a chemical it's a neonicotinoid and it's uh it's it's uh partnered with pyronyl butoxide so it's it's actually three different pesticides mixed together and the pyronyl butoxide uh-huh. acts as a, acts as a synergist that causes the bed bug to not be able to develop an immunity so it's it's designed to battle uh pyrethroid resistant bed bugs so one of the problems in the field that we've been addressing for the last like maybe 20 years is that pyrethroid resistant bugs so so when they took DDT off the market they moved over to more of a synthetic pyrethroid type pesticide which is derived from mm-hmm. flowers like chrysanthemums and marigolds and things but it's man made it's a man made duplicate and so the problem is okay. is that with things that are more natural or more natural like the bed bugs are able to develop an immunity to those types of pesticides and so you end up with a superbug that can't be killed by really much of anything and so what Crossfire does is it addresses the pyrethroid-resistant bedbug strain and helps eliminate those too. Now, pretty much every state in the Union, Virginia was one of the last states that didn't have pyrethroid-resistant bedbugs, but we got invaded by them back maybe five years ago, and that's when I switched to Crossfire and I haven't looked back. It's, really, it's just a really good pesticide. That's what I use in my business. I don't use anything but Crossfire. What? You've been using it for years. Yep. Do you have any risks for human contact with it? You're probably around it all the time. It has no signal word on the label. So where most pesticides have no. a signal word like caution, danger, warning, um, right. Crossfire has no signal word. It doesn't even require gloves. Now, I wear gloves no matter what kind of pesticide I use. I always wear gloves because I'm in it every day. But um, And that's just my personal preference. But you don't even really have mm-hmm. to wear gloves. It does recommend that you wear long sleeves, long pants, you know, like like pretty much any other pesticide. But that, um, you know, you don't have to wear a respirator. You don't have to wear gloves. You don't have to. In fact, one of the very first bed bug jobs I did, I wasn't wearing gloves because I didn't have to. And I reached down and picked up a bed to flip the mattress over and had a handful of bed bugs in my hand. So ever since then, I've been wearing gloves whenever I use it because <laughs> oh. I just don't want a handful of bed bugs. <laughs> well. All very useful. I'll get back to listening in. Thank you for the information. No problem. Good luck with your truck. Bye. All right. So, boy, the stream's really scrolled up. Uh, You don't want people to waste their money. Um, Let's see. what. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Jennifer, you had asked a question about honeybees. So, one of the problems with honeybees is a lot of people believe that without honeybees, and because they are a pollinator, that if the honeybees were to disappear from the North America, that we wouldn't have half of the plants or 75% of the plants that exist in North America. And that's actually not true. So the honeybee was introduced to North America by colonists in the 1600s. Before this, we had no honeybee. The, uh, the Western honeybee 
didn't exist or Eastern European European honeybee didn't exist in North America at all. Um, and so if I get called out on a nest of honeybees, I will recommend a beekeeper. But if a beekeeper either can't be found or a beekeeper has already come out and said, hey, we can't get this, you know, hive without tearing your house apart, I kill the honeybees. So I have absolutely no regrets in killing honeybees. In fact, I feel like I'm one of these people where I would be more along the lines to pay higher amounts for honey from Europe. If the honeybee ceased to exist in North America, I would not cry. I would just buy my honey out of Europe where the European honeybee is supposed to be. Um, along with European hornets, which are a predator to European honeybees, and that's what a lot of people have called bell hornets. In fact, I just did a, uh, I just killed my least recent video, uh, my short video that I did was European hornets. That's the nest that I went after uh, a few days ago. So no, I, I do refer people out, but I don't push it. I'm not one of these people who are like I am not killing honeybees. You have got to get a beekeeper. I'm not one of those people. I absolutely have no problem killing honeybees. Um, let's see, but just to, just to reiterate Cameron about the parasit, para, the parasitosis, um, it isn't always that way. Sometimes it's actually bird mites, which can't be seen. And so I typically will treat the house for a bird mite. If the customer continues to have a problem, usually I put them on a 90 day plan once a month for 90 days. If the bird mites cease to have, a, if they stop itching and stop scratching, that's what I deem as a bird mite problem. Otherwise, I tell them they need to go to the doctor. They may have a scaby issue or something like that, and it's out of my control at that point. That's how I feel. So that's how I deal with customers that I believe might have the parasitosis. But honestly, most people don't. I've only come across maybe one or two people that have had that um, the actual delusional parasitosis where I believe that's what it was. Um any other time, it was a mite or something like that bothering them, and it took a 90-day process to get rid of them. The bugs ceased to exist, and the people stopped having itchy spots, and everything went all right. So, um, But like I said, you can't really see bird mites. They're very, very difficult to see. Um, so let's see. The real duct tape bandit. Um, not always a bug. Let's see. I'm kind of curious about the product as well. I'll, I guess, talk about apprehend. Um, let's see. Is anyone else having trouble hearing Jason? Oh, can you not hear me? I can turn up my mic if you need me to turn up my mic. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so let's see here. I'm a woman, and I treated my mother's house yesterday in a wife beater, water boots, and shorts. I used gloves and a mask, though. <laughs> I am not, yeah, that, you're not wearing proper PPE, that's for sure. PPE police gonna come get you. Um, Jennifer says, I'm not convinced about the environmental necessity of bees. I just like the honey. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what the truth is, is that actually in, in North America, what happens when honeybees come in? So if the honeybees come into an area, let's say you have a meadow, all right, and in the meadow you have, uh, let's say, clover. Um, you're, not, you're not really growing any crops. It's just like wildflowers and clover, you know, the things that honeybees like to pollinate. Um, but there are other animals that pollinate these plants as well. Mosquitoes. Male mosquitoes do not bite people. Male mosquitoes feed on nectar from plants, so they don't bite you. Um, they, they, they pollinate. They pollinate plants. Bumblebees. There's an actual type of a flower, and I, my wife actually looked it up for me. I cannot remember the name of the flower, but there is a flower, a plant, uh, uh, I think it's a, a breed of tomato, that bumblebees are the only bee that can pollinate that specific breed of tomato. And it's the way their body kind of shakes when they go to, to pollinate that um, they're the only, the only bee that can successfully pollinate that plant. So the problem is when honeybees come in, because a hive of honeybee consists of tens of thousands of bees, so it's lots of them, and they're all flying over the ground. In fact, in an area where you have a lot of wildflowers and you start seeing these honeybees, you can, you'll see lots of them all over the ground, 10, 20, 30, sometimes flying all over the ground, and they're not going to bother you because they're just interested in the nectar they're drinking from the plants. But the problem is, is that if the bee is not as successful at pollinating as the native pollinators are... And so when they go to the flower and they drink the nectar, there's no nectar left for butterflies, uh, mosquitoes, other types of flies, uh, you know, bats. Bats also feed on the nectar of flowers. And so they're, 
they're drinking everything and there's not enough to go around. And so what you end up with is you end up with a problem where the the plants themselves aren't being pollinated effectively and they start dying off or there's not as many and you end up with a problem with endangered plants and also uh, you end up starving out the local pollin- uh, pollinators. And so that's the problem with the honeybee. That's the problem with farmed honey uh, in areas where uh, there are massive farms of just, just honeybee hives is that they'll actually chase out local pollinators and you'll have issues with even your local gardeners, uh, your farmer's markets and stuff like that won't be supplying as many as much produce because the honeybees are actually chasing out local pollinators. So that's a, actually a real problem in North America nobody ever talks about. But there was actually several university studies. And if you, in fact, if you go to that video um, that I posted, in fact, I can post a link for anyone interested Um, This video right here on honeybees. If you live in a qualified... I go over the different uh, propaganda that is being uh, spewed on like social media like Facebook and Twitter, even here on YouTube. And uh, I give actual links to the case studies. Um, If you go to show more here and you can click down, you can actually read the sources. So you've got the Discover. This is the Discovery, Discover Channel. You've got National Geographic. You've got a Scientific America article. You've got two of those articles right there pointing to the problems with the honeybees. And so I back it up with actual uh, reputable resources. And so you can go and you can read those and you can learn about uh, the honeybee and why the honeybee is actually a danger to North America, which is something you don't hear about very often at all. So let's see. Let me post that to chat. So like I said, if you're watching this later and you, you don't get to see the chat, So so I don't save the chat. So uh, be sure you tune in live so you can see the links and stuff I post. Um, So let's see. Um, Let's see. And Cameron says, I can hear you. Good, good. So let's see. I did have, let's see, where are my links? I've got so much stuff open. Um... Let's see here. I think my mic might be a little bit in the way. Let me see if I can rotate it. There we go. I changed my setup. So last time you were here watching me, my monitor was right here, right beneath my camera. Now it's over here, like an extra three inches. So my microphone now droops right down in front of the top of my screen it makes it hard for me to read, but I had this is the the screen I always use to to go back and look at my um. Oh my goodness, I forget about these posts people make about me. You guys are embarrassing. So, oh goodness, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat that one. Flirting with me on YouTube. Uh, C. Richardson says, "Thank you. I just uh, thank you for the Crossfire info. Did you use Crossfire, Richardson? Have you have you used it yourself? Have you had success getting rid of your bedbug problem? I know a lot of people have. Um, okay, so they said I just bought a 2020 SUV for business related stuff. The next day, I found a baby roach. So I set up eight glue traps, and out of the eight traps, only one of them caught a, ro- a roach, an adult size roach." The third day, I found another roach on one of the traps, almost adult size. So in three days, I found three roaches. I was happy that I didn't catch 300 of them, but still frustrated to even be going through this and worried that more will come. I called the dealership and complained because this SUV is for business, and this would be embarrassing. Total cost is about 35000 I feel this is unacceptable. But then again, it was a previous rental car from Avis, and I can tell that every time they detailed it between customers, they forgot to clean under the back seat. I found kids' toys, unopened candies, tons of dog hair, and a bunch. So this is this is kind of crazy. Um, so what they did was they bought an SUV that was infested with cockroaches, because actually you can absolutely get cockroaches in your vehicle. Um, this is I have actually seen this. I had a car one time I went up to in a parking lot that was full of just garbage and there were roaches crawling around inside the uh, windows of the car. 
So it's absolutely possible to have... Now, that is that is something I would probably use tempered for because tempered is for high temperature um, things. And so I would use tempered in a car if I had problems with the roaches in a car, maybe some roach bait and stuff around places that wouldn't get so hot or exposed to sunlight. But that's when I wanted to go over just because I thought it was a crazy story. Um, and someone... So, so there's been another question that has come up a lot about crossfire so one of the things about crossfire and let's let's go over the label i don't do this very often maybe once a month or so we'll go over the label of crossfire so let's search oh oh they got a new bottle look at that new bottle let's see Alrighty. Let's see, where does it say it? All right. So Well, let me just explain. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to search through the whole label and take all the time that you guys aren't sitting here watching me read. So, Crossfire has to be used within 24 hours of mixing. Um, if One of the biggest questions that comes up is people will say, I mixed a gallon of Crossfire and I want to know what I should do with the leftovers. I went and did my whole house. I've got half a gallon left over. Can I save it? Or they'll say, uh, actually, one person asked me recently, they said, my friend wanted to take the rest. It's been four days. Can they take it and use it in their house? And so here's the, question, here's the answer to the question. And I'm going to be as direct as I can. I cannot give you advice that would go against a product label because I'm licensed and I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm required to by law to only give you licensed directions. So if the, li if, I mean, licensed label direction. So if the label says use within 24 hours of mixing, that's what the label says. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, is that what people do? No, that's not what people do. People will mix. They will keep it mixed for four, five, six days. They'll reuse it. They'll keep it in the same container. They'll use it for three months in a row. Um, is this effective? Does this cause the, the pesticide to wane in, in strength? Yes, it does. Uh, does that mean it will no longer work? That's not what it means. It means that the label says, do not use after 24 days. And the reason the label says that is because it might not be as effective. It might separate from the water. There's lots of different reasons that they say not to do it. Maybe it's going to cause you harm if you were to apply it outside of the labeled time that you're supposed to apply it. Maybe they just want you to buy more Crossfire. The point is, is that a lot of people ask me, they say, what do I do with the excess chemicals? Should I just pour it out and start over? Um, and what I can tell you is what other people have done. So what I know as a fact from other people that I have talked to, I actually had a customer of mine. I ended up having to treat her house for bed bugs. She bought Crossfire. She used the 13 ounce bottle, she used, uh, she mixed a whole gallon of pesticide and she used it over a period of three months. She kept the same gallon of pesticide already pre mixed, just shook it up really good every time she used it, remixed it all, and reapplied the pesticide. She still had to hire me. I still had to go to her house. I still had to spray for bed bugs. Did it work for her? Well, obviously it didn't. Now, she also doesn't have experience, she doesn't know where to treat. She's not as, a, as, as, as efficient as I am treating for bed bugs. So it's possible she missed a spot. It's possible she wasn't as thorough as I am. Um, that's a possibility. But I know people that have reused the pesticide even after a month. They've used the leftover half a gallon that was left over. They used it, it still killed bed bugs. So I don't want to tell you that it doesn't work. I can only tell you what I'm required to tell you by law based on what the label says. But I can tell you what other people have done in their experiences, and then you can make the choice for yourself. I always say, the label's the law. See? 
The label's the law. This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional. You know, the label is the law, all right? I can only tell you, see, I say it on both. When I close my stream, thank you for coming. When I open my stream, I always say the label is the law because I have to say that. Is that always, what's the best way to put this? Is it, is it always the most effective? Maybe, maybe not. That's for you to decide. I'm just here giving you information. So hopefully I can help you. So if I've answered that question, please uh, type yes in the comments. <laughs> you know, I hope I answered that question well enough. So, uh, C. Richardson says, yes, gone in three springs, two weeks apart. So, so C. Richardson said that they did get rid of their bed bugs. It took them, uh, about, I guess, six weeks. I'm, I'm assuming six weeks uh, to get rid of their bed bugs. Um, she did it, did it for his aunt, uh, or her aunt. I don't want to say her or his. A duct tape, duct tape bandit is a girl, so, you know, I'm not going to assume gender. This is what happens when you assume gender. But I'm just talking in a chat room full of people. I did it for my aunt. She's jumping for joy. I will spray in two weeks again, then go to a one month of maintenance. Thanks. Uh, Andre says, hey man, I saw one of your videos and I ordered Alpine WSG. I have a roach and bed bug problem in the kitchen and was wondering if I can spray inside the kitchen cabinets if I move the dishes. Yes, you can. Yeah, in fact, I recommend it. Pull all the dishes out of the cabinets and spray the cracks, let it dry, and put them back. That's what I recommend. Um, Duct Tape Bandit says, can you tell me what you use to get rid of water bugs? Water bugs are a type of cockroach. Now, it, let, let's ask you this. So, Duct Tape Bandit, I'm ask, answering their question now. So, it's going to be a little bit of lag, a little bit of lag. This is what a water bug looks like, all right? This is a water bug. It's big, big, huge bug, all right? That's, that's a water bug. That's what water bugs look like. Now, that's what a water bug actually looks like, but that's not what a water bug, what people call a water bug. This is what people call a water bug, which is an oriental cockroach, all right? Now, you see how these pictures are all mixed in. You got roaches mixed in with water, actual water bugs. This is actually called a water bug or a toe biter. They are about three inches long, about that big. They're a pretty good, good sized bug, and they will bite you. They eat fish and stuff like that, so they're a big bug. Um, the water bug or the oriental cockroach, which is what most people call water bugs, because no one wants to admit that they have an oriental cockroach. It's a cockroach, you know. Everybody's got that type of mentality. Oh, it's a roach. I must be nasty. No, nah, it's not true. Roaches. The, 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 a lot of times these are called water bugs because they are attracted to water. They like water. They like wet places. And so it's very common to find them in basements. And uh, I have got a fly flying around here and being an exterminator. It is bugging me to no end and it is driving me crazy. So if you guys see the fly, know that he's driving me crazy too. So anyway, I recommend um, to, to get rid of... of uh, I'll say so. So, so, rug, duct tape bandit says, Don't show me. I hate them. I cry when I see them. They look around. They can fly. So, oriental cockroaches cannot fly. Um, so, I'm not exactly sure what you have. Do water bugs actually fly? Do I didn't know that. Water bugs fly. Water bugs fly from one body of water to another during mating season. While flying, they're attracted to light and are often to see near parking lots. Oh, so is this actually what you've got then, the real duct tape bandit? Are you actually getting these big, humongous water bugs? Because that would be interesting because I've never dealt with them before. Okay, so let's see. Let me jump to another question real quick while she answers. Um... HP Lifestyle says, what do you think I'm doing wrong? I've sprayed Crossfire everywhere every two weeks, including cars. I'm getting bitten less, but still getting bitten. Only seen two bed bugs and one nymph during this time. Um, it sounds like you're doing it right. You may be reinfesting. It sounds like you're probably reinfesting. That's my best guess. Um, so y even if you're treating your car, they may be, you know, in a bag, handbag, backpack, something like that. Um, so the real duct tape bandit says, yes, they are having, so I don't know. Um, this is something I don't know. Now, water bugs are big. I don't honestly know what to spray for them. If you're having problems with them, I don't know. I really don't know. Let's see. 
Um, pesticide. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know. The thing is, water bugs typically stick to water. Um, they, like the, the, the article said, they will fly to the house when the lights are on. So I imagine if you treat the area where your light is, like a dust to dawn light, or maybe you've got a light in your bedroom shining through the window and they're coming to the window, you should be able to treat around that area with a pesticide that would kill them. Arthropods die from pretty much every... I mean, the pesticides should kill them, I would imagine. But that would be crazy. I would like to see some pictures of some real water bugs. Um, it, I don't know. That's that's one I'm going to have to look up. Maybe I can do a video on water bugs. I'm not really sure. Or maybe I can look it up and tell you next week. If you show up next week in our live stream, I'll go over it. Actually, let me write that down. Um, Where's my little book? I have a little book. There it is. Lists. My wife is big on this. She said, you need to write stuff down so you don't forget. All right. The real... Duct tape. Bandit. Water. Bug. Spray. I will look it up. And I will too. So. And I will let you know probably by next week. Or I'll release a short if you follow me. I do shorts. Uh, I tell you what. Follow me on TikTok. Because if you follow me on TikTok. Um, I can do a three minute long video there. And release it, and it'll be uh, quick and easy if I find it before next Thursday. So let's see what else. Let's scroll back up here. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. I had left Overmix Crossfire. Don't have a good facility to get rid of it safely. Uh, so I used it. After four days, it still killed them. Watched them waddle out and die. Sprayed after 15 days. Worthless. So Justin said he resprayed Crossfire after 15 days and it didn't work anymore, but he sprayed it four days later and it still killed bedbugs. So um, that's what Justin did. So like I said, I can only really tell you what other people have done. I, I have to tell you what the label says because the label's a law. And if it lasts past 24 hours, I don't honestly know because when I mix, I only mix enough Crossfire to use the day I need to use it. If I have two bed bug jobs, I'll mix a whole gallon. If I have one bed bug job, I mix half a gallon. If I need to remix a little more, then I can mix a little more. But I get the big jug that actually has the graduated measurer on the side that allows me to mix it for less if I need to. Um, because it's a gallon. I get a whole gallon of it, and that way I've got it. I can mix it however I want, and however much water I'm using is how much I mix. So I never have that problem with leftover crossfire. Never. I never do. I always mix fresh crossfire every job I do. But I feel like mixing fresh pesticide on every job you do is going to be better. Um, I try to use everything. So if I mix Alpine WSG, I try to only mix what I need for the day or for you know the jobs I'm doing. Uh, if I mix Demon, I try to mix only what I need. Bifenthrin, anything, any kind of pesticide that I'm going to use that day, I try to only mix what I need so I don't have any left over the next day. I don't like a stale pesticide in my tank. I like to use it up and get it done, get it over with and not have anything. I feel like it's better for the customer. It does a better job. It just works better um, mixing your pesticides like that. Um, also, how do you clean the pesticide sprayers after use? Do you just use water? Yeah, I just use water. That's all. Triple rinse and clean out the, the filters and the screens and everything like that. Um, uh, typically, I will use my rinse to treat my own house around the interior, uh, exterior of the house is typically what I do uh, with anything, you know, that I need to rinse out. I usually just treat my house with it. Um, how can I get rid of fruit flies? So let me show you my Instagram. If I think I have a link to my Instagram in the description, but just in case I can show you, let's see, Instagram. All right, so let's show you my Instagram. Sing. There we go. This is Jason Alicia Akers. This is my shared Instagram with my wife. It's really just for my crap. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, see, I got lots of bugs. I got termites. Look at them termites. They're cool. See them termites. 
I took that picture. All these pictures I took. Um, but if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a mouse. I took a picture of a mouse. There's a uh, wood roach, a termite swarmer. Uh, there's a dobson fly. Those are pretty cool. Um, let's see, got lots of different things on here. I took a picture of those strawberries. I thought they were nice. You know, this is different foo-foo stuff. But let's see, there we go. So this is what I recommend making for fruit flies. So this is a funnel in a glass, obviously. And around the rim, I used actually packing tape. I used a, um, oh, if I got a roll of it here to show you, I don't, I usually have all kinds of crap on my desk. I don't have it because I just clean my desk. But um, it's like packing tape, you know, that, that you use to pack a box, like a cardboard box to go to, to pack. And so you, uh, you seal around the rim of the tape with a, with a decent, with, I mean the rim of the glass with a decent tape, not just regular scotch tape. You need to use something nice that's going to actually seal between the funnel and the glass. And the funnel needs to go almost to the bottom, leave about an inch gap between the bottom of the funnel and the liquid that you use. I recommend pouring apple cider vinegar or wine. Wine works the best. Uh, fruit flies like wine. Wine is fermented fruit before it becomes vinegar. You'll catch more fruit flies with, with wine than you will with vinegar. So that's what I recommend. Not grape juice, but wine itself. Fermented. They prefer fermented uh, food. So. Also, if you're new, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video today that you're watching. Uh, usually, Jennifer is blabbing, telling people to like my videos, but I'm going to try to do some shameless self-promotion real quick and tell people to like my video because if you're watching this later, after it's saved on my stream, then you could, you could like it there. Let's see. Um, and if I've missed a question, retype it. It's not spam. It's just me. I can't keep up. When people ask me questions, I try to get to their question right away. And I may miss yours. So if you still need your question answered, don't hesitate to retype it again. Don't type it over and over and over and over, but, you know, retype it, and I'll get to it. Uh, they flew from the ceiling to the stove to the house infested since the 50s, and combat gel killed them. I see one or two about once a month now. I'm in southern Oklahoma, by the way. I follow you on TikTok. Oh, well, there you go. So if you follow me on TikTok then I will, uh, I'll just release my TikTok video there. If I find something that kills water bugs, I will let you know. I, I am curious now because we do have water bugs in Virginia. They're just not that common. So I, um, in fact, I've never had a call for water bugs. Anytime people call me for water bugs, it's because they have an oriental cockroach problem. It's not actual water bugs. So, um, I am legend says, do you travel to get rid of bed bugs? If so, how much do you charge? I'm in Pennsylvania. I do not go to Pennsylvania. I only do statewide in Virginia, and I may end up having to drop that plan soon because it's a lot on me, and I'm really busy locally, and I don't have a lot of time to travel statewide anymore, but I do not go into Pennsylvania. Thank you, Nope. I appreciate the $10. You didn't have to do that. That's pretty nice of you. Thank you very much. Didn't even say anything with your with your donation, but I, I really appreciate the super chat. Um. Cameron says, uh, fruit fly, look for infested food. Yes, I agree. Cameron, that's, oh, why didn't I say that? So, yeah, look for potatoes and bananas, but especially potatoes. People have potato bins. You know, like, potato, P-O-T-A-T-O, -O, bin. All right, so you got a potato bin like this. All right, like this little potato bin right here. And in that drawer... All the way over in the back side of that drawer, it's really common to have a t potato go rotten in there or an onion. And so I would look in your potato bin and see if you got a rotten potato because you need to throw them away if you do. You, you don't want to eat a rotten potato. That's kind of nasty. You know, they're gross. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you do like rotten potatoes, but no, I don't like them. So I don't want to assume you don't like rotten, you like rotten potatoes or don't like rotten potatoes. Uh, let's see. C. Richard says, thanks. I, okay... Um, how many grams of Alpine WSG would you use for doing a whole house? I know the label says 30 grams for one gallon. Um, now it doesn't say 30 grams for one gallon. It depends on the bug. So let's go over the, uh, Alpine WSG label. So 
So, if you look at the label of Alpine WSG, boom, there it is. Um, and you scroll down to the mixing directions, there. So, if you're getting rid of ants, let's see, let's zoom in. I don't know how well you guys can see that. All right. So, if you're getting rid of ants, including excluding pharaoh ants, it's 10 grams per gallon. Okay? If you're getting rid of bed bugs, it's 10 to 30 grams. Do 30 grams. Just do 30. Just do 30 for bed bugs. You need 30 grams to kill bed bugs. Um, crawling insects, pests, including pill bugs, spiders, brown recluse, uh, excluding brown recluse, and Turkestan cockroaches, 30 grams. So you see, so that when it says 30 grams to a gallon, it's 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 talking about up here. So see, it says here if you look at your spray dilution chart, uh, to get a 0.1 percent, it's 10 grams per gallon. 0.2 percent is 20 grams per gallon. 0.3 percent is 30 grams per gallon. So that is the strength of the pesticide that you're using. But not every bug is treated the same. Like fleas is only 10 grams per gallon. See. And the house flies, which is what I've got bothering me right now, is 10 to 20 grams. So you don't need to mix a 0.3. You only need a 0.1 or a 0.2 to get rid of house flies. So based on what you have, that's and this is the uh, this is this is the indoor application. So that's actually for indoors. Then you've got indoor and outdoor applications here. Indoor outdoor applications. You've got ladybugs, 10 to 30 grams, and centipedes. Uh, bean blasted, kudzu bugs, brown marmoted stink bugs is 30 grams. Carpenter ants, 10 to 20 grams. Paper wasp and yellow jackets, 30 grams. So, yeah, so the, it really is based on what you're trying to get rid of on how you mix your pesticide because that's going to base your strength. That's going to tell you the strength of the chemical you're trying to attack the bug with. So you want to use the proper strength because if you're using too weak of a pesticide, then... You, it's not going to be strong enough. You might end up producing a chemically immune bug where it's not going to die from it even if you use full strength because you've used a weaker strength and it's gotten used to it. So that's why it's important to read your labels to make sure you're actually treating for the right thing. So hopefully that answered that question about the label for Alpine. By the way, I have all these products on my Amazon page. So bed bugs, hornets, and yellow jackets because I just made a yellow jacket video the other day. Um, and I did start listing a spray tank. So if you go to Bed Bug Supply, uh, I took the BNG off because I was tired of Amazon uh, where the BNG would just disappear and people would say it's sold out, you can't get it. And so this is the one that I'm recommending right now. This is the sprayer I'm recommending other than a BNG. It's not the best sprayer. It's not a BNG, but it will do. It does have an angled tip so you can get into the cracks and behind your dressers in places that you don't have to move your furniture in and out. And I did include this because people, and it's got a brass tip so you don't have to worry about it breaking, you know, like a plastic. It's not the best tool. It's not a B&G, but if you have to go, see, it's also got an option for a fan. You see, so it's got the fan spray, two fan spray selections. It's got the, the pin stream selection. And then I wouldn't recommend using that for bugs, but these three I would recommend for pest control. And so I did put that on there. I did recommend it. I went over and I looked over on myself. I have not been able to make my video on my actual product review of different gallon sprayers, but this is what I would recommend if you were to buy it. It's a five-star rated sprayer, and uh, I just took the BNG off because honestly, Amazon charges like $600 for a BNG, but if you use my actual link, I have a link for a BNG on my page, so let's let's go to let's go to um, let's actually just go back to my main page. Let's see if it'll. Do I just click back? Because it won't link me. Home. There we go. Home. All right. So let's go to a live stream right now. Spray. This is a live stream we're on. This is this is where we're at, and you can scroll down to the description below, and. Let's see. Oh, I don't have it. The link is not here. That is sacrilege. I can't believe I did that. So let's go to... Let's go back home. And let's go to videos. And let's go to my product review here. It should be here. If you live in a qualified... And then we scroll down to show more there. 
there is an affiliate link. So if you click there to the BNG, I actually have a link to do your own, and it's a lot cheaper than what Amazon charges. So it's still expensive. Don't get me wrong. It's still expensive, but I've got an alternative now on Amazon that I recommend so far. So far. Because I've had people tell me this worked really well for them. So it's the only reason I'm using it. It's the only reason I'm telling you to try it. Because I'm very, I have never used it. I'll tell you right now, I've never used this. I've never used it. But from everything I could see and the way that it's designed, I think it's going to work best for you if you want to try to get rid of bed bugs, mainly because of those tips. I really like those spray tips. So hopefully that will help you. But the B&G is, um, it's three, they fluctuate in price. So uh, the real duct tape bandit says, I thought it was 325. Some of them are. This is the green one. This is the one I use. This is actually what I use for my business. And it is 358 to 359, but they fluctuate. So they can be anywhere from, I've seen them as low as 289. It just depends on the market. The market has been bad for a lot of things. All the prices have gone up on a lot of things. So, uh, but if it ever runs a sale, then I'll always, I'll post it in the comment section of my, um, so if you go to YouTube and you go, let's see, let's go back to my page and you go to the community tab right here. I post things when they go on sale here, like the Crossfire and the steamer and different things. Actually, my, my, we have this steamer. We use this steamer right here. And so I have it. Um, and it's a really, really, really good steamer. And it normally retails for $300. Uh, Amazon apparently has been selling it for $150, but we were look, we actually bought it from a different site. And uh, it was $300, but I noticed it was on Amazon for $150, so I posted that. And it's a really good steamer. It would work really well for bed bugs. In fact, I'm going to do a do your do your own type you know tutorial showing people how to use the steamer uh to treat a bed for bed bugs so oh, oh. sorry let's see let's go back up i'm running my mouth i need water throat's dry I'm talking too much all right Sorry, I was trying to figure out who all has said something on the fly issue. Sometimes I've had customers with fruit flies surviving in the fridge. Their temperature was obviously not low enough to completely stop them. Currently using a Flowzone backpack sprayer for my exterior work. Do you use something similar? If so, any recommendations on alternatives? So I have a Flowzone, but I don't use it. Uh, not for exteriors. I, I'll, I'll tell you something funny, and I need to post pictures. But I actually took my Flowzone and I took off the spray nozzle. I bought it specifically for this purpose. So I had a termite job that I needed to do. And it was an office building that was on a main street. I did not have the ability to close traffic. It, the parking was on the opposite side of the street from where the office building was. I did not have a hose. I had a 300-foot hose still not long enough to go into the office building and down into the basement of the office building to drill through the floor, to treat through the floor, to kill the termites that were coming up, obviously, from underneath the basement floor. So what I did was I bought a flow zone backpack and I took a BNG uh, pressure treating the the pressure treating tool for a slub slab, sub slab injector tool and I put a quick connect on the end of my flow zone and I connected my backpack sprayer to a um, sub slab injector so that I could treat under the concrete floor with uh, pesticide to kill termites and it worked amazingly well I did have to re refill the backpack a lot but I had my tank above where it was full of all the chemical I needed already mixed so I could take it from the tank Fill up the four gallons, because it holds four gallons of pesticide. Take it down to the basement, fill the holes, come up, fill up the backpack, go back into basement, fill the holes. It was a lot of weight on my back. It was a lot of walking back and forth, but it worked great. In fact, I thought, 
this will actually be pretty cool to have this around just in case I have that to happen again. So that is what I use my flow zone for. Um, I don't use it to spray the outsides of homes. Uh, most homes aren't really that tall and a BNG works fine to get everywhere. It's not about volume of pesticide used. It's about where you put the pesticide to be effective. So um, I think a flow zone uses a lot more chemical than what it needs to. And that's the problem with a flow zone backpack is that I feel like it's almost like a power sprayer. And I think that's just excessive. I don't think you need that much pesticide to treat around the exterior of a home to get rid of bugs. So I don't use them. I just use a regular BNG. They can shoot about two and a half stories on a non-windy day. And I just find that that just works the best for me personally. So that's what I use my flow zone for. And for those that don't know what a flow zone is, flow zone. This is a flow zone. This is actually like a backpack sprayer looking like John Goodman walking around on arachnophobia. And that's, that's what you wear. It's a great, great product. I'm actually really happy with the product, but um, I'm not using it for what typically people use them for. That's just, you know, that's how I am. I'm, I'm, I think outside the box. I try to figure out ways to solve problems and still get rid of the customer's issue without having to, to buy another 300 foot of hose to make it all the way down into a basement. Uh, or stop traffic. You know, you don't want to have to stop traffic on a busy road for two to three hours while you're doing a, a, a termite job either. So it's easier to just buy the backpack, fill it up. And it only took me maybe, you know, 30, 40 minutes to treat the basement. Um, instead of hours it would have taken me if I had to stop traffic and deal with people back and forth across the road. So, um, let's see, I'm a pest control apprentice and I'm in Texas. Do you do multiple services for bed bugs? We do three. I used to do three. I did three for years back when we, uh, we didn't have crossfire and I was using things like I've used, let's see, I've used Talstar. I've used uh, Durzban. I've used lots of different types of pesticides for the control of bed bugs. In fact, Durzban used to be the go-to pesticide. That was a normal pesticide. That's what everybody used back before, like, 04. Everybody used Durzban. And you typically never ran into a bed bug problem because that was, like, by generic. I didn't use it specifically for bed bugs, but I used it in homes for general pest control, and houses never had bed bugs. But after 04 is when I started noticing that bed bugs started making a comeback, and I was using things like Talstar and stuff like that to control bed bugs. And now, uh, I, I mean, Talstar just doesn't work anymore. Anybody in the field that knows, it finds out that some exterminator has been using Talstar for bed bugs, knows full well that that's not going to kill the bed bugs. And so the um, Talstar stopped working. I was using Talstar and Zimprox, and it stopped working. And so now I'm using uh, Crossfire. That's what I've moved into. So I just use Crossfire. But I don't typically have to do um, follow-ups uh, one I mean, I might have to do five or six a year follow-ups on, on bed bugs, but most of the bed bug jobs, one treatment's all it takes. Um, let's see, the real duct tape band, but I'm wanting to get my exterminator licenses. How long did it take you and how hard is it? Do you think a woman could do it? Oh, yeah, a woman could do it. Uh, my daughter does it with me. My my little girl, she's eight. She works with me. Uh, my son, he, he was eight when he started working with me. He's 16. Um... I got my license when I was 17. If you know the material, you can absolutely get your license. I don't know how hard it is out in Oklahoma, but in Virginia, it's a lot of work. Let me see. Um, I don't have any of the books down here with me, or I could show them to you, but it's a stack about that thick. It's if you, It depends on what you're wanting your license for. So you've got your general pest control in Virginia. You have general pest control, commercial pest control, uh, termite control, and then health. And the health division is for things like ticks and mosquitoes outside. And then you have um, the, oh, and we got a call. Let's see what we got here. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? Can I help? Yes, yeah, sir, I'm watching your live stream all, and I had a question. What's up? Um, I, I was wondering, I found one bed bug on, on the bottom of my, um, Mattress spring, and I was wondering, is just one bed bug the sign of an infestation? Well, yeah, at least one. I mean, one means you've got, you, you may have more. You may. I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. People will say, um, and it comes, honestly, it comes from cockroaches. When people say, you know, you see one, you've got a hundred. Usually that's true when it comes to cockroaches, not necessarily with bed bugs. You may have just brought one in the house. 
but you definitely need to treat just in case there are more. You know, it is a possibility. Uh, was it an adult that you find? Was it full grown? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it was full grown. It was uh, underneath. It was one underneath my bat, my mattress spring. I just found that one underneath my mattress spring, and I, I I took it out and I squashed it, and it was it was full of it. Kind of you know uh, had blood in it. And uh, I haven't found anything else, though, besides that one. And I want to go to the store and buy some of that Crossfire to spray my mattress, or do I have to just completely throw it away? Um, you probably won't find Crossfire in the store. You usually have to order it online. You don't have to throw your mattress or box spring away. But if you've got one, so so the problem is is that you have an adult. The issue is is that if the, the adult has bit you and has decided to lay eggs, that's the problem. And so that's when you're going to have, you're going to run into more of an issue Later on down the road, probably in two, three weeks, you're probably going to start getting bit again uh, multiple times. And that's because the eggs are going to hatch and then the babies are going to come out to bite you. So typically it takes anywhere from two to three weeks to start getting bit from a nymph that's hatched from an egg. The egg that is laid today, it takes about two to three weeks before you get your first bite. And so that's one thing that I would be concerned with because you have an adult I would be worried that maybe the adult, if it bit you, it obviously got a blood meal. That's what they use the blood meal for is to lay eggs. And so she may have laid eggs before she died or before you killed her. And that's where you're going to run into a, a, a more serious issue down the road. And so that's why you want to try to treat as soon as possible. You want to get, get on top of it so you don't end up with an infestation. What, what could I go right now like to my local Home Depot or to like my local Walmart and buy? Something you would recommend? I wouldn't recommend anything at Walmart. The only thing that I recommend is Harris. What? Um, I don't want to ask you the personal information over the internet, but uh, Harris 5-Minute Bed Bug. All right, so... The five minute bed bug killer from Harris. I don't know if you're still watching my live stream or not. I can I can actually show I'm gonna answer the question and let everybody else see it anyway. But the Harris five minute bed bug killer is sometimes they do sell this at Home Depot and it is the same thing as Crossfire. The problem is is it's pre mixed and so it's been sitting on the shelf since for who knows how long. And the label of Crossfire says it needs to be used within 24 hours. If that's when it's most potent, and that's when it's going to work the best. And the problem is, is this is Harris stuff. Even though it is Crossfire, it's the exact same active ingredients as Crossfire. It is, it probably is not going to last as long as Crossfire, and it's not going to do as good of a job. Um, but if you click it, and now this is on Amazon here, but it's the exact same active ingredients as Crossfire. Okay, I can see it. So those active ingredients, the clothidin, metafluthrin, and pyrolyl butoxide, those are the active ingredients in Crossfire that's fully mixed. And this is mixed in a gallon jug. And so this is something that you would want to get. And they do sell this at Home Depot. If you go to Home Depot, they used to. Um, if you go to Home Depot and then search for Crossfire. Oh, not Crossfire, sorry. Stop looking for my information. Let me see here. <laughs> Uh, Harris bed bug killer. Um, and there, there it is right there. The one gallon, five minute. You want the five minute egg and resistant because that is what Crossfire is. This other yellow bug, okay. this is not the same thing. This yellow one and this black label, neither one of those are it. You want to get the five minute bed bug killer. And it's really expensive. You can tell by the price tag because of what it is. They have to pay for uh, the, because uh, patented, it's patented. Crossfire is a patented pesticide, so they have to pay MGK more just to be able to use their product, and that's why it's $90, because they're having to pay them okay. for it. But you can get it delivered. You can get it picked up at your store. Like, see, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm from Lynchburg, so you see my Lynchburg store is closed right now, but I can do a pickup at the store. So you can actually go and get this at the store right now. They sell it at my local Lynchburg store. Okay, so they sell they sell that at Home Depot. Yep. Yeah, okay. but you, I would call them and make sure they had it first. Look it up online and make sure they had it before I wasted my time driving over there. Okay, that sounds good. So hopefully that'll take care of your problem. But if you catch okay, it early so enough, this much. may be all you need. All right, yeah, because I, you know, I've been getting bit by these bed bugs, and I've been trying to find them, and I just, I just found one right now, and I can't find anything else. So I, I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah, give it a shot. I think it'll work. Let me know. Come back and let me know later okay. how it works for you. Thank, you. thank you very much, sir. No problem. Good night. Yeah. All right, bye. 
All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jennifer actually says that Harris is cheaper at Lowe's. I didn't know if, if Lowe's would sell it. I know her, people have told me they have actually found the Harris at their local uh, at their local Home Depot actually sitting on the shelf, this specific one. And this one's hard to find. Now, you could find this one and this one at... Uh, you could find both of these at Walmart. They sell both of these. I've seen them at my Walmart shelf. But I've never, I've never seen this one. Oh, and we got another call. Hey, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? Hello? Can you hear me? I can kind of hear you. I can hear myself in the background. <laughs> I can't hear you very well on speakerphone. Can you hear me now? Now I can. That's good. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, okay, I just recently purchased some... Um, uh, it's MGK. It's by MGK. Um, but I bought the, the, the spray, the residual spray. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering... Does that work as well as the concentrate, or should I just go with the concentrate? Did should you buy the, the aerosol can? Yes, I did. It works, but it doesn't last as long. So the, okay. the residual from the aerosol can, while it's more convenient because you just, psh, and you know, you're sprayed it, but... The, the problem. Well, I'm just lazy. I just did. Oh, yeah, I know. I understand. I understand. Well, it is more convenient. Honestly, it is. And it is Crossfire. And if it were a mild case, I would say, sure, that would probably be fine. But the problem with aerosols, and this is with any kind of aerosol, whether it's Raid or uh, Crossfire or anything, is that the aerosols have a lot of inert ingredients that aren't listed on the label. And a lot of them are things like propellants and petroleum based things in order to force the chemical out of the can. It puts it under pressure so that it will actually come out of the can like an aerosol. And the problem is, is those chemicals will break down pesticides quicker. They will cause them to not be as effective and they'll cause the residual where the residual just doesn't last as long. And so that's why I usually don't recommend aerosols. I don't recommend things like bug bombs or uh, because they break down super, super fast because of what is in the can. Even though the active is the exact same thing as Crossfire, because it's mixed with a whole bunch of other things they don't have to put on the label, it messes with the efficacy of the pesticide, if that makes sense. Okay. So okay. it will work. So I, just, I mean, it does work. I know of exterminators okay. that use it, and it does work. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't last as long. I probably wouldn't because... trust it past a week. Oh, okay. Because I know it said on there... Um, you can't believe everything, you know, you see, you know, right. you read, but I know it says on there, it says it lasts for up to 30 days. And I'm like, Oh, okay. That sounds good. Cause I, like I said, I bought it. I just used the whole can right. and I'm just like, you know, I just used it all up and, um, I sprayed it around. It's mostly, I haven't seen any bed bugs in my, um, in my living room, but I have seen them in my, you know, unfortunately in my bedroom. Right. And I think I just have, I think I just have a mild case of them. They're not like, it's not like it's like, Falling from, you know, I saw videos where I think bed bugs are falling from somebody's ceiling, and that was that was disgusting. Yeah, I've seen but that before. I don't have, <laughs> but I don't have a, a, a bad case where it's like, um, I don't know. I just think they're on focused in one area. I could be wrong because I do have a bed, uh, uh, what you call it, like a, a headboard, mm -hmm. and I've seen some come out of there. Because what I did was I bought a steamer too. Um, right. It's like a handheld steamer that right. I've been using. Um, uh, I use that just about every day to, you know, to, you know, to help with that. But I know you need more than that because they are hard to kill. So right. they definitely are. So, um, but I well, think steamers that will kill too. them, especially that steamer I posted on, on my Amazon page actually gets to like over 200 degrees. It'll kill them as soon as you touch them. The steam is actually really effective, but then it's different from a heat treatment and it is targeted. You're actually treating the area where the bugs are. If you see their eggs, you steam them, they die. If you see the bed bugs, you steam them, they die. And that's really effective. Where a heat treatment is more of, well, we're just going to grow the heat in the room and uh, it'll kill the stuff in the, in the target area, like the really hottest zone. But then in the cool spots out near the edges of the room, the bugs don't die at all. And so that's where the, okay. you know, targeting with a pesticide or with an actual steamer, you're going to do a better job. It's going to be more effective. 
but I would the okay. the I mean let me know come back and let me know later how it works for you I would like to know but I know that the negative reviews that I've seen on all the websites usually point to the aerosol and not the mix I see. so that's the okay. that's the biggest issue is that people are like hey I bought this stuff and it's supposed to kill bed bugs and it didn't work for me and you find out it was aerosol it wasn't the mix at all okay so. All right, and then I want more question. I have yeah. um, now. When you do buy the concentrate, do you have to use a certain um, type of sprayer, or you could just buy a sprayer at any store? The problem with sprayers is that, I mean, probably any sprayer will work. It depends on how messy you want things to get. The problem with a garden sprayer, like just a generic ten, fifteen dollar garden sprayer from like Ace Hardware is that they will leak really bad on the tip. They're assuming that you're going to use it for something like Roundup and you're going to be using it outside. And if it drips on the ground, it's not a big deal. But if you're using a sprayer like that in your bedroom and it's dripping all over your floor and it's getting pesticide on stuff that you really don't want pesticide on, that's that annoys people. That Actually, I had a lady call me one time and said, hey, I bought this Ace Hardware sprayer and it just leaked like a sieve and I, I used more of the pesticide just dripping all over the floor than it actually went on my bed. And that's an issue. That's why I actually put that uh, sprayer on my Amazon page on my Google, um, Google on my um, on my page on the, uh, the bed bugs because I feel like that would be more effective for, I mean, if you want just like a cheap 40, I think it's like 40 to $50. It's more than, you know, a $10 garden sprayer. But I feel like if you're going to do the job and do it right, I think that's going to work the best. And you want a gallon sprayer because 13 ounces mixes a gallon, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. Okay. So, All right. Yeah, I will. I'll just go with that. I'll just have to order the concentrate and just get the and just get the gallon, the, you know, the good gallon I've sprayer. I've helped for that. Prob- well over 100 people get rid of bed bugs on their own. And they don't have to hire a professional. They don't have to spend thousands of dollars. I mean, I charge locally. Uh, I don't charge a thousand dollars to do a bed bug job, but it's it's most of the people do. Most of the prices locally to me is anywhere from fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars, and that's like the cheapest. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's really expensive to do a bed bug job, and I I mean for fifty bucks at most for a thirteen ounce bottle of Crossfire and fifty dollars for a sprayer, you've already I haven't even spent ten percent of a bed bug job, and you did it yourself. Yeah, 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 because I saw how expensive it was, and I'm glad I saw what you talked about, about the heating, because I thought about getting somebody, you know, I was like, that's expensive to get somebody coming here to just heat up your place. Oh, heat's like, really you know, expensive. Just, heat is more expensive and, and, and than it, anything, it, it, and it's just a placebo. Yeah, it, it only works for a few days, and then they come right back again. Yeah, because I've seen this guy advertising, and I'm like, he's talking about, well, you get heat, it kills them, it's done, and the job is done. I'm like, oh, okay, it sounds good, but then I saw you, I was watching your, um, you know, watching you, and you were saying, you know, how... Well, if you do do that, what's going to happen is they're going to go right in the wall. And I said, oh, yeah, that makes, yeah. Well, see, that makes so sense. If, yeah. let's, let's look yeah. at it this way. If your headboard, this is a real common place for, a, for an outlet cover to be, is right behind your headboard. In fact, I, I go into people's houses all the time and I flip their beds upside down and there'll be a phone charger plugged right up behind the headboard of the bed or right beside, behind the nightstand, right behind the bed. And if your headboard is right up against where you plug your phone in the wall or your alarm clock or whatever, the bed bugs can go into that crack just as much as they can go into the crack on your on your headboard or on your bed rails. And they will go there, and then they'll lay eggs there. And then the heat guy comes in, uses a heat machine, kills 98% of your problem, but the other 2% are in the wall already. They, weren't, they didn't even have to run from the heat. They're already in the wall. That's where they laid their eggs. And then as soon as the heat is turned off, there's nothing left to kill the bed bugs at all. And so the bed bugs come out, and then there they are. Give it like a week, 10 days, you start right. getting bit again. and Or maybe even a month or two. It may be a couple months before you get bit. And a lot of these heat treatment guarantees will only be for like maybe 90 days. And it may be 90 days before you even get bit again. And so it's just real convenient. Or they'll use a pesticide residual that will last 90 days, like a repellent, that will actually keep them in the wall. So like they'll use their heat machine. It'll kill everything alive in the room. All that stuff is dead. And then the, the pesticide residual will last 90 days. So the bed bugs that are hidden in the wall don't come out because they see the pesticide. They're like, oh, we don't want to come out. We're going to die. So they stay in the wall. And as soon as the pesticide residue is gone, it's been 90 days. Mm-hmm. And then they don't have to warranty their work. Okay. They can pay. They can charge you more to come back out and do another one. And so it's really just a never-ending yeah. cycle, just stirring the pot, stirring the pot, never actually getting rid of the problem. 
Right, so. right. I have one other question, real quick. Okay. Um, now the the um the little um the little the thing that you place uh what are they? I can't remember the call. You place them under your bed. You know, you place them under your furniture. Interceptors. And that detects. Yeah. Do they? Do those really work? No, they don't work. Oh, okay. They don't work. They're okay. a waste of money. I wouldn't get them. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was just wondering about that. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Well, you have a good night. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you bye. Too. Bye-bye. Oh, boy. Lots of calls tonight. You guys have really kept me hopping, kept me on my feet. Um, Let's see. Your eyes when he said one bed bug. I, ra- I have this, this weird tendency to, to raise an eyebrow when I hear something interesting. And my wife, I used to do this when I was a kid, too. I'd look at her, and I'd because I've known my wife since she was like seven. I, I'm, let's see, she'll be 36. I'll be 40 this year. So it's like, three to four and a half years, four, three to four years apart from us. And uh, I used to always raise my eyebrow. If I hear something interesting, I've always done that. It's it's just a weird kind of quirky thing I do. So <laughs> um, let's see what we got here. Um, also, do you use Triloma annual? No, I don't. Um, was DDT not a pyrethroid? I thought that bed bugs developed a resistance to pyrethroids during, including DDT. It was banned before I was born, so it's way outside of my knowledge base. Now, DDT, I think, is a chlorinated hydrocarbon or an organophosphate. I'm not sure. Let's see. DDT. Let's look it up. A synthetic organic compound used as an insecticide. Uh, it's a chlorinated. It's a chlorinated hydrocarbon. So it's like chlorodane. So chlorodane, DDT, lindane. Um, these are called chlorinated hydrocarbons. It's a, it's a family of pesticides. So no, DDT is not a pyrethroid. It's it, pyrethroids were based off of the same chemical structure as DDT, but they're not the same. Um, let's see here. Jason Longray, let's see, BNG sprayer, $115 great product, been using it for a while. If you got a BNG for $115, you got a good deal. Um, do you use Tempered? No, I don't. It's imidacloprid. Imidacloprid is a good pesticide. I've used it before, but I don't use it now. Um, I would. I would use it. I've used imidacloprid granules for ants and stuff. They work really well. Um, but I don't use tempered itself. Or imidacloprid. Imidacloprid, imidacloprid. I did do a video comparing Crossfire to tempered. If you're interested in that, that's on the channel. Um, let's see. The Real Duct Tape Bandit said, I bought a $10 sprayer at Lowe's and it worked really well. It didn't leak. I wanted the $40 one, but I was broke as a joke. It worked well and did not leak. Had good reviews. Great. That's good. So... Real Duct Tape says she used a, a BNG or a, a plastic sprayer from Lowe's and it worked really good for her and it was only $10. So that's like I said, that that's that's the thing. We, we kind of need to work together as a community. This is one of those things where we're kind of sticking together. I only know what I know that I've used and I can't tell you specifically what I have or haven't used. So, um, I mean, what I have not used, how well it works. Only you guys can help kind of spread that information around. Um so anyway it has been an hour and a half i'm known for not going past an hour and a half i really try not to i have done you know two three i think almost a four hour stream one time when i was trying to raise money for covid um but i am going to go ahead and get on to bed i got to work in the morning got to kill termites tomorrow actually got a termite job early morning so hopefully you guys can get a good night's sleep don't worry about the bed bugs And I will see you next week. Remember, Tuesdays, I usually have a video go live every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. And I do my live stream every Thursday night after 9, 930, somewhere around there. Depends on when the kids get to bed. So hopefully this has been an interesting stream for you. Hopefully it's answered lots of questions, had lots of calls. I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight, answering all, asking all the questions for me to answer, keep me on my toes. And uh, hopefully you guys will sleep good tonight and not worry about the bed bugs. So... Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Thank you very much.